Okay, so let's start with my basic family tree here. Here I am at the bottom, and here my grand my parents, sorry, in the second layer. In the third layer, we have my grandparents, and the fourth layer, we have my great grandparents. So in Spanish, since I'm at the bottom, I am hijo, or son. Hijo. If I were to have a a uh, sister, sorry, she would be my hermana, or she would be the hija of my parents. Hermana meaning sister, so that would make me her brother, hermano. But that's it if I were to have a sister. Okay. So, here we start with my parents. In Spanish, the plural word is padres, and here's my mother. Her name is, her, the term is madre, and my father, the term is padre. So, Consuelo is my madre or mamá, and David is my padre or papá. Now, more generally, we have the same word for grandparents, in our case for Silverio and Elias, being the parents of my parents, abuelo, and Margarita and Mary being abuela, plural abuelos. As for my great-grandparents, Rebecca and Otón, they are my bisabuelos, or great-grandparents. If I were to have if I were to know their parents' names, then I would call them my, then my, their parents would be my tatara abuelos, meaning great grandparents. Okay. So, hijo, madre, padre, abuela, abuelo, bisabuela, bisabuelo. If I want to distinguish between paternal and maternal grandparents, or, well, yeah, and uncles and aunts still count too. I would say abuela materna, abuelo materno, and same thing for bisabuelo, ma, bisabuelo materno, bisabuela materna. In my father's side, I would say abuela materna and abuelo paterno. So, uh, abuela paterna, sorry, and abuelo paterno. Okay, let's get started with next part. Okay, so I clicked on my mom's name and out popped my, her sister, Elisa Galvan. She is my aunt, my tía, hermana de mi madre, sister of my mother, my aunt. By marriage, her husband is my tío, my mom's cuñado, brother, my mom's brother-in-law, my uncle. Brother-in-law, cuñado, uncle, tío. Okay, so now we they have three children. Both are my the three of them are my cousins or primas. If I were to have a male cousin, then she he would be my primo. In Spanish, we also have the term prima hermana and primo hermano. We consider them, even though they're not directly related to us, we consider them our cousin, our sister cousin, and brother cousin. Now in English, they are our cousins, first cousins, and the children of my first cousins are our second cousins. In Spanish, we don't use primero, primo primero or primo segundo. And well, it sounds uh, kind of dumb, but I'm sorry, but it sounds kind of redundant. Why were they called my first and second cousins? So what I tend to call my second cousins in Spanish are my, my sobrinos. Yes, sobrino means nephew, but I, even I'm using it in, uh, as a mistake, but I'm sorry. So here we have Mirna's children, Federico being my other primo by law, by, yeah, by law. So let's hear Fernando, Enrique, Jesus, and Maria, children of Mirna and Federico, are my second cousins. In Spanish, I call them, I personally call, I personally call them my sobrino. If we click on one of them, let's say Enrique. Okay, here we are. Here come up Federico's parents, Eloisa Alarcón and Fernando de Mije. Enrique, oh Mirna to begin with to start off. Since she married Federico, Mirna's mother-in-law or suegra is Eloisa, and Mirna's father-in-law Fernando is suegro. O suegra, suegro, madre, padre, esposo, o husband, hijo, 
husband, uh, Enrique, and hija, Maria. Okay, enough of my mom's side. Let's go to my dad's side. Okay, so the same kind of thing here. Okay. So, like what I said, just for a review, Gloria is my aunt, and by marriage, Robert is the uncle. Robert Sr. Brittany, Robert Jr., and Michelle are my nephews. Well, second cousins. Sobrinos. So, Gloria is my prima. No, is my tia, sorry. She is my tia, my aunt, my tío, uncle. My primos, Brittany, Robert, and Michelle. Now, let's do this one. Okay. So, by marriage, Reynaldo Navarreta and my cousin Cil Celia Navarreta, they had a son by adoption named Ronald. And her and his um, wife, Stacy. So anyway, Ronald's parents is Reynaldo and Celia. So Ronaldo, sus, los padres de Ronaldo, Ronald, son Reynaldo y Celia. Ronaldo's abuela, la abuela de Ronaldo se llama Sara. Los bisabuelos de Ronaldo son Mari y Elias Tapia. Let's do another example. Another example of tatar, a bisabuelo and tatarabuelo. Okay, so as a review, mi abuela Margarita Tapia y mi abuelo Silverio Tapia tienen otra hija, la hermana de mi mamá, que se llama Elisa. Por boda, por casamiento, por casado, mi tío, el cuñado de mi papá, mi mamá, se llama Enrique. Tenían, tuvieron tres hijas, Mirna, Elizabeth y Edelmira. Una de ellas se llama Elizabeth. Elizabeth es hermana de Mirna y Edelmira. El marido o esposo de Elizabeth se llama Alonso. Tuvieron tres hijos. In Spanish, it doesn't matter if you, are, if you have two girls and a boy, or in the case of Mirna, three boys and a girl, they are called hijos by plural. Just like in regular Spanish pronouns, if you are in a group with more than one, if you are a group of girls and there's one guy, you are called nosotros, we, or our group, nosotros. Anyway, so, Elizabeth tiene tres hijos, Nereida, Gabriela, y Yazar. Tomamos Nereida, por ejemplo. Los padres de Nereida se llaman Elizabeth y Alonso. Sus abuelos se llaman Elisa y Enrique. Sus bisabuelos se llaman Margarita y Silverio. Y sus tatarabuelos se llaman Rebeca y Otón. So like what I said in, in, in Spanish, Nereida's parents are Elizabeth and Alonso. Her grandparents are Elisa and Enrique. Her great-grandparents are Margarita and Silverio, and her great-great-grandparents are Rebecca and Othon. So, I hope you enjoyed this little video, and to see what semantic problems and according to kinship words that we have in Mexican Spanish.